wasteland and let's jump straight into this episode with the laser hacksaw yes yeah, so um, in order to take off these little fittings from these car doors that I rescued two videos ago I need to use a hacksaw and uh, sadly I tried just holding it in place I tried using a little pair of grips neither sort of worked so picking up where we left off last time and we were looking at attaching barbed wire new barbed wire that we just hand twisted um, and it's it's really simple you just twist it around a couple of times your first pole and then whenever you go up to a pole you twist it around once or twice and away you go before you know it you've attached it it's done now fixing it in place again nice and simple bit of super glue it fix all of life's problems just glue it in place I mean you can get really technical with pinning things and all that but I tend not to be too technical so you might be looking at it and thinking at this point right well, what's the next step for this build well I think a hood ornament would be quite good and I've been having a look through my Gaslands book and there's something battle hammer shaped yes the battle hammer the reference in the Gaslands book these were the guys who did the first ever YouTube videos on Gaslands, you know, of their own volition. No one asked them to during playtesting, and they really did help me, you know, in the early days learn how to play the game. And they've helped a lot of people, including the creator himself, you know, which is why they're in there. They also, you know, had one of the first little battle wagons made entirely from a one pound toy. So to celebrate this, I've decided I'm going to commemorate this race rig using a giant fist holding a hammer as the hood ornament. And this will then be painted up in a nice flaming orange and may one day make its way all the way to the battle hammer guys. But until then, let's talk about where this came from. So the hammer and hand is from a Heroclix figure, which I believe is called Steel. He's a DC character. And that was just simply super glued on. Now, looking at the front of the trailer, I always like the idea, similar to Fury Road, how you have this great big pile of steering wheels. Part trophy, part... Well, you take one from there when you want to drive a car, so it's got, it's got a bit of a dual purpose. And it's really simple. A couple of bits of plastic rod to make this sort of crude frame. And then you're just gluing the steering wheels straight on. These are the steering wheels we saved from a couple of videos back when we were opening up all those cars. And this is the nice thing because they really do add a degree of realism and scale. And they, they add a certain sort of wasteland flair that you just don't get with with armour panels or barbed wire. You get those on anything. You know, police police riot vans will have well they won't have barbed wire all over them but they will have armor plates and things but it's only really in the wasteland you see trophies like that being taken so here we go here's pretty much the complete build i added on some extra tires and things and like i said some of the car doors will be cut and put on now here in the uk we are freezing our asses off with with storm emma and the beast of the east hitting at the same time in march but you know what, it's time to just paint this and get it done. So you might be thinking, well hang about, if it's in minus numbers outside, why the hell are you painting? Well, you shouldn't at the end of the day, you shouldn't. Because you get weird effects like this, where it almost looks like the paint's been freezing as it's trying to dry. But you know what, you can paint that up as rust or corrosion and it's not a problem. So yeah, I uh, should say, don't spray paint don't spray paint things outside when it's snowing but if you do sometimes it works now here we we can see that it's all nice and matte and a single color which is really cool it's going to make painting this nice and easy because we've not got a whole horde of different colors all that you're trying to cover over we're going for a nice black base coat for the trailer and the base of the cab I should say this in videos more often, but always shake your paints to make sure they're nice and mixed. Sometimes you get the two sort of components in liquid paints of separating out. You get like a solid chunk at the bottom and all this watery rubbish on top. We're just doing a nice thin layer of black on top to start, and this isn't anything 
outrageously exciting, which is why this footage will be sped up at some point. Um, and you might not be able to see it that well, but we're going for just thin coats, always thin coats, even though the camera makes it look like I'm just dropping this thing in a bucket of paint. I'm not. It's all thin coats, but it's just sped up. It's also a good opportunity as well, while you're painting, to make sure things like the hinges on the doors haven't seized shut, so I'm able to paint the inside and a bit on the, uh, the jet engine. And you can see as well, the gas land sign, it doesn't jump out as much as it did when when I first put it on there. Now it's a lot more subdued. So now that we've painted it, this nice black matte base coat, we're going to look at the next step. Yes, yeah, so you can see all the little details, they're all separated out now, which is quite nice. I should say as well, this time I've done it correctly and I've actually painted the wheels black as well. I've not forgotten about this step and, and later on had to repaint the wheels. So here we are painting the base of the cab. So again, like I've said, we're doing all the thin block colours first, which means right now we're going to paint the cab in a nice orange shade. And you can buy pre-mixed colours, but to be honest, orange is just yellow and red, so it's pretty easy to mix if you just combine the two on a palette. This will look a bit more yellow than it should. Again, this is the camera and the lighting, so sorry about that, guys. But this is one of the advantages of using a brown base coat. You can actually see the paint, it goes on and retains its colour a bit more than if it was going straight onto black. So you don't have to be too neat with this. Again, it's a base coat, so you just want to splat the paint on, just get it on the car. You can spend hours trying to get it perfect, but you can see as well some of the details from the base car itself, like that sort of cracked paint effect. That came from that car just being a well-played-with toy. I, I didn't take a file to it to create that. That was something that was already there. And that's the nice thing about painting. It will bring out these details that later on you can save and highlight in your build. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, now that we've got our sort of black base coat down, which is our main, we're going to mix up some grey paint and we're just going to highlight the edges of all these armour plates. This will help the Gaslands logo on top not stand out, but at least sort of catch the eye a little bit. And with the armour plates on the side, it will add a highlight that isn't just paint chips or rust or some other surface damage. Now we're not trying to make this grey, we're not trying to paint this as a layer, so we're not going overboard, which again, the camera makes it look like I am, but it's just little highlights, little highlights to pick out the details. One of the things to remember as well is you don't need to rush when you're doing any of this. It's quick and easy, don't get me wrong, but there's no there's no rush when you're painting. You shouldn't be like, oh my god, I've only got 15 minutes, better get this done in like five. It's You, you take your time, you, you enjoy it. Because it's, it's a hobby, it's not a job at the end of the day. None of this is work, this is something that we enjoy. So you can see on the top there, the detail stands out. So the next step is painting these silver areas and making sure that they, they're covered, they're based, they're blocked in. So again, we're just taking some paint, we're twisting the brush on the palette so we've got a nice fine point, and there we go. You don't, again, with, with everything that we're painting, you don't need to worry about being too perfect applying it, especially with silver paint, because at the end of the day, if it goes over, well, it just represents natural chipping or scratches on some of these armour panels surfaces. So we're going to paint these, these spikes as well, these masts that are running along the sides and the front and rear of the trailer. Now, even though I made these out of two different materials, you know, we used barbecue skewers on the front and back spikes, and then we used plastic tubing on the sides. It's like an improvised scaffold pike. We're just going to paint them all up silver. You know, keep it nice and uniform. There's no need to really try and mix it with different textures, unless you want to, in which case, 
by all means. This is not a follow this to do all painting guide. This is a, you know, this is just how I do it. So again, painting the front ram on the cab, we're painting the rear details and the side details, and of course the front radiators and bumpers and headlights. I've left off the exhausts because at the end of the day the painted nice silver. And we're just applying some liquid talent and all oil to the whole thing. You don't need to load your brush too much. Messy paint job spending hours going over every single crack and crevice perfectly. We're just going to get this on so it darkens the orange and, and gets the shadows into the, the metalwork. Now coming to the end of this part of the video and to the relatively regular updates of these videos. I've been on holiday for the last nine days and as much as I'd love to just keep on making videos non-stop, I do have to go back to work. So expect updates, if not every three, then every six, seven days, I'm afraid, guys. But that said, you will be seeing the race rig completed very soon. Because, hell, we've just done all the base colours. So what have we got left? We've got detailing, dry brushing, and highlights. It's going to be lovely and easy. But no worries, guys, and I will see you all on the next video. Thank you, Wasteland.